I'm going straight I am straight as an arrow I'll pay the price and just the time myself useful at all. Why'd you have to start so early? Well, because I wake up early. When you've been three years in the nick, you get used to waking up early. On top of which, I don't sleep any hour. Well, then he does. And you're going to wake him up with all that racket. Oh, he's here again, is he? Listen, he's supposed to be on the sofa. Where's he sleeping then? In Raymond's room. Oh, where's Raymond then? He's in my room. Well, where are you then? Well, I was down here and then I went back up. Where to? Raymond's room. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost me, I tell you. <laughs> oh, God, would you mind asking him not to park his articulated lorry outside his window? We get precious little sun in here as it is. We well, he only got in at two o'clock on his way back from Dover. Oh, yeah. Well, it's better he stops here than in some doss house on the North Cirque. And he gives me what they give him for bed and board. I know what he gives you. <laughs> Don't be crude, Dad. That's why I can't get to sleep one night. Well, nor can we with your bang, bang, bang first and in the morning. Makes up for your bang, bang, bang last thing at night, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't be crude, Dave. Listen, I haven't got a job, so I'm channeling all my energies into fixing this house up proper, ain't I? Have you noticed the new pelmet at the top of the stairs? It's at the bottom of the stairs now, Dad. <laughs> what? It fell down. Oh, dear. That's only because it backs onto your bedroom wall. <laughs> Have you noticed the sink? The sink don't clog up no more. And Raymond's door that used to stick because of the damp weather last winter. That don't stick now. No, because I took it off. I shaved the bottom of it and I re it. it. Is the paper come? You're not listening to a word I'm saying, are you? I don't know why we need bookshelves in this house. No one reads here. I intend to. I've got nap all else to do, ain't I? Do you want some toast? Yeah, I wouldn't mind, yes. Maybe a boiled egg. No, we only got two eggs and I'm saving them for Lenny. You can have toast and marmite. Blimey, even in the nick, I've got a boiled egg of a morning. <laughs> well, can't you make do with one? Well, one egg's no good. You don't know you've had it. Oh, well, if I won't know I've had it, I won't have it then. <laughs> then I shall know I've had it, shan't I? Let him have it, then he'll definitely know he's had it. <laughs> Twice, at least this morning. <laughs> bang, bang. Morning, Raymond. What? My head hurts. Why? Bedroom door fell on it. <laughs> <laughs> How's the rest of you, then? What time is it? Quarter past. Sleep well? Is the paper come? No, not yet. What are you going to do today, then? Ingrid, you see my bicycle pump? Keep your voice down, then. He's trying to sleep. Going cycling, are you? That's nice. Going out in the country, eh? Whereabouts are you going, son? I had some pliers here yesterday. You know, have you noticed there's a sort of lack of conversational rapport in this house? Have you noticed that? I say one thing, you say another. I ask a question and nobody answers. Have you noticed that? Are either of you aware of that? Brown bread or white? You see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you see, she just proved it, ain't she, son, eh? Why are you making bookshelves? No one reads in this house. Look, I asked a simple question. Brown or white? Just a minute, just a minute. I'm on the brink of a discovery here. That's the first straight question my son Raymond has asked me since I come out the nick when he said, who are you? <laughs> Give you a brown, then he don't like brown. What was that question again, son? No, they don't look too secure to me. And that's not a question, that's a statement. So you've forgotten, now. It's all gone, isn't it? Listen, they are perfectly secure. Take my word for it. That's because I studied carpentry in the nick, didn't I? See what I mean? They're all right. Yeah. Well, I don't think they go in this room. Well, they will do when they're personalised. All you need is a bit of bric-a-brac or a family photograph. Look, that's all you need. Look, see. Just a little ornament like that. That's all now. Perhaps a, a bowl of fat. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Go on. Didn't do nothing. Yes, you did. You weakened it. Go on. <laughs> Get off, you long, long drink of water. Go on upstairs. <laughs> don't mutter. Don't mutter. Bound to weaken things if we go around banging things, ain't you? You shouldn't go around banging things. And that goes for you too, gobba. <laughs> Dad, if you've got a moment, 
moment. <laughs> if I've got a moment. Well, just nip down to Cochrane's, you know, get a few things in. Oh, that'll add a bit of excitement to my day, won't it? Nipping down to Cochrane's, that asthmatic old twit. <laughs> What is this? It's uh, tea bags, golden shred, Brussels sprouts, mandarin oranges, half dozen eggs, scarring. Oh, and I forgot. Um... <sighs> Brian Flakes, who's that? No, they're Brian Flakes. Oh, I don't like Brian Flakes. Ah, but they've got a special offer on this month genuine folk art watering can kits. Oh, right. I'll eat them instead then. <laughs> oh, that give me something to do this afternoon, won't it? I can come home and erect a watering can kit. You've got to go and see your probation officer today, ain't you? Tomorrow. Bird. What? Bird. I know it's hard. I know what you've been going through, but you knew it wasn't going to be easy. Now, you mustn't let things get on top of you. I you know. never have. I know. I, d I didn't think it was going to be as hard as this, that's all. I want to make myself useful. You know, I want to have a job. But with my record... No, well... that's not true. There's over a million unemployed in this country. There's boys what left Raymond School two years ago who don't know nothing else but a dull queue. Yeah, but it's this attitude of, of cynicism and mistrust I keep coming up against, which in turn makes me more cynical, and, th and that's something I've always resisted. You know that very well, don't you? I mean, I went into the post office the other day just to get a, a post order for me paws. They got a, they got a Fortney Barrow there, chained to the wall. <laughs> I mean, still didn't write, but it was chained to the wall. <laughs> These days, that is the mood of the country. You've got to get used to it. It's been like that for a while. Of course, we did have a brief respite for the Jubilee celebrations, but that's behind us now. Yeah, well, it's getting me down. That's all I can say, girl. How's your sex drive, then? <laughs> what sort of a question is that for a daughter to ask her father? What a perfectly healthy one. I don't think things like that should be swept under the carpet no more. Well, what's my sex drive got to do with anything? Well, it could have a great deal, because I think your lack of it is symptomatic of your general malaise. I mean, you was always a man with a man's appetite. Yeah, that reminds me. What happened to that bored egg? Oh. <laughs> Dad, you know what I mean. Here you are, with Mum gone, out of prison, and you ain't so much as looked at a woman. You don't think I'll bring a woman into this house, do you, Ingrid? I must have... I've got some sort of decorum and decency, you know. I would not embarrass the other members of this household by, by consorting in this very house with a, with a woman of the opposite sex. <laughs> I don't see why you shouldn't. All the rest of us do. Not Raymond, surely. I mean, he hasn't got the energy, has he? <laughs> or a charm. Oh, you'd be surprised. Girls like Raymond. Oh, what do they like about him? His national health acne. <laughs> Take it from me that he's got no problems in that direction. It's you what I'm worried about. You see, I think you're going through your midlife crisis. Like what this article in Cosmopolitan said last week. The male menopause cause and effect. Now listen, Ingrid, we will have none of that sort of talk in this house, please. You shock me at times, you do. You really do. I'm not being rude, Dad. That's medical. Well, medical things are rude, aren't they? <laughs> Way. Yes, I am. And I will not have any of this permissive, liberated talk in this house. I'll tell you what my midlife crisis is. Shall I? Shall I spell it out for you? I am a 45-year-old ex-lag with no money, no prospects, and as of now, no wife. Now, for the sake of my family, I'm trying to go straight, which means at my age, with my qualifications, my future holds about as much excitement as a wet Sunday afternoon in Merthyr Tidville. <laughs> <laughs> Tip, but I'll tell you why, because they've got more pubs there than anywhere else in Britain, and they're all shut Sunday. <laughs> hey, old dad. What? You take this. No, I've got the money for the groceries. No, 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 that's just for you to have something in your pocket, you know. Ingrid, I will not take a handout from my family, thank you very much. Well, you always took it from Mum. <laughs> I've got plenty of tips, you see. That's one of the perks of being a manicurist. Well, that and free nail varnish. Well, bring me a bottle of that, then. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ingrid, I'm, I'm not being ungracious. I just haven't come down to that yet. You know what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll put it underneath our Jubilee tea caddy, just in case you change your mind. All right, suit yourself. Dad? Yeah? Have you been doing some of your own improvements to this kitchen door? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I'll fit the draft excluders. Yeah, I thought you'd done something. <clears throat> in here. <laughs> hey, Fletcher. Come on, Mr. Hello, Danny. 
Never mind all the Italian bonhomie. Let's have a cup of tea and a kick out, shall we? Tea. Morning, Puss. Eight, ten. Shut up, I'm counting. Well, Finish your milk round early, ain't you? Been giving the horse Benzedrine again, have you? <laughs> no, I ain't had all since before you went in. Ain't you? Must be a bit of a job pulling that cart round on your tongue. <laughs> That'll be dark. Oh, it's all electric now. Oh, an all electric horse. What will they think of next? <laughs> one the cup of tea. Hey, <laughs> one the cup of tea. <laughs> he used to talk broad cockney at school, you know, he did. Help <laughs> yourself, two sugar. I will, I will. Oh, blimey, not you as well. Look at this. <laughs> Afraid someone's going to steal your British Railways teaspoon, are you? Hey? What's the wrong with you? You got out of bed the wrong end, eh? No, I wish I hadn't got out of bed at all sometimes. I really do. Here, here. What? You're my age, ain't you? Thereabouts. I'm a 39. You lying git. You've got a son of 26. <laughs> In Sicily, we come to manhood early. Oh, yes. Agreed, agreed. But you come from Stoke Newington, don't you? <laughs> Listen, I'm a busy man. Oh, really? What are you doing? Taking in washing? What? <laughs> What do you want to ask me? I want to show you something. Ready? Are you ready? See? Si. Ready? Here we go. Go. Santa Madre, que paya detecte, dio me perdón. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't understand the language, but I certainly get the gist of it, yes. Now, I used to be exactly like that, right? Especially when I was in the Nick. Now, this morning, this very morning, I went straight past her and right under the sporting section. Yeah. I was much more interested in Orient's crippling injury list. What do you say, me? I don't get it. No, I don't get it either. No. <laughs> but my point is, I'm not sure I still want it. You see, now that is very worrying for a man of my age, isn't it? I so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I think it's the stuff they used to put in the prison tea, you know. I think it's just beginning to work. <laughs> Mind if I sit here, love? Ah. Uh, Puss, do me a favour, would you? Don't tempt me. Oh, no. There's a lad. Come on, Fletch, I've got to do that column all over again now. <laughs> Gratitude for you. Like a bit of Kit Kat? You sod. <laughs> Pardon? You heard. I was hoping I heard wrong. Well, you didn't. Oh, well, old Tullys, that's me finished. Off home then, Puss, to the little wife, eh? Or are you going round to that little number in Sycamore Crescent? What little number? You know who I'm talking about. The one whose husband's on the oil rig. Listen, I'm not your common old garden randy milkman, thank you. I'm not talking about in the garden, am I? <laughs> <laughs> or on the common, for that matter. I'm talking about round Sycamore Crescent. Yeah, well, I ain't that sort, neither. Ain't you? No, I ain't. Oh, dear. Must have got what I got. I'm going round the betting shop. Do you want one on? Oh, I see. Here, do you want to bet on Fletch? Tell you what, I'll do Arctic Lady, four o'clock, Kempton. No, 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 no. Gambling is the child of avarice and the father of sin. George Washington said that, you know. Or was it Eric Catchpole? <laughs> <laughs> Who's Eric Catchpole? Philosopher and wit. Used to play left half for Brentford. <laughs> he was the man who said, show me a milkman in high heels and I will show you a Dairy Queen. <laughs> Go, Don't take any wooden yogurts. <laughs> Good, that, eh? Dairy Queen, Milkman Isles, not him. Oh, never mind. You're a laughing soul of the party, aren't you? No, I'm nobody. Like to rabbit, though, don't you? How old are you to talk to me like that? How old do I have to be to talk to you like that? I didn't ask you to sit here. I sat here to save you from yourself. I can look after myself, thanks very much. Here. What? Get some of that inside you. I reckon you need it. No, I don't. Why do you come here, then? For his Italian cuisine, or what? I just come here, don't I? Listen, if you're desperate enough to put your hand into Percy's purse in broad daylight, then you are in dire need of a cup of tea, so get it down, you. Not a cup of tea, Danny. Echo, the last of the biggest spender. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pay for this tea. Didn't think you could. Sleeping rough, are you? Wolf I am. Run away, are you? Wolf I am. Not from round here. Wolf I'm not. Oh, go, come on. <laughs> Look, I'm not the law, I'm not the welfare, I ain't the vicar either. So, 